Hi. This video is to help you understand how to perform the experiment determination of the osmotic pressure of Gatorade. It's not meant to replace the procedure. It's just that if you watch this video, the procedure will be a little bit easier to understand as you do it. So I have laid out here on the desk all the items from your kit that you're going to need to perform this experiment. Um, I filled the large Dixie cup here up with fresh tap water. And uh, this item is the dialysis tubing. Now, the first thing we have to do is undo the staple on the dialysis tubing so that we can get these apart. And these pieces of tubing have to be incubated in water for a while in order for us to be able to um, open them up. So we're gonna put them in this quart container from your kit. And we can put some water in there, put in enough water to cover them, swirl it around a little bit. And we can leave that sitting on the side while we move on to the next part of the experiment. In the next part of the experiment, we have to prepare 10 sucrose solutions that have different percentages. And we're gonna do that inside of these Dixie cups. I'm only gonna demonstrate one of them, but the procedure is the same for all 10 solutions. We have to prepare 10 solutions that are between one and 10% sucrose. So the first thing you should do is label this cup. The label on this cup is going to be very important in this experiment. So I'm going to label this with the number one. And then I'm going to take my digital scale. I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to put the cup on there and let it settle down. If it doesn't read zero, then tear the scale. And then take the sucrose from your kit. Sucrose is regular table sugar. And for trial number one, the procedure says we need to weigh out about 0.5 grams. So anywhere from 0.4 to 0.6 would be okay. And add slowly until you get into that range. Okay. I got 0.52, that's in that range. So before I do anything else, I'll make sure I record that value, 0 0.53 now is what it reads. And that would be the mass of sucrose and I'm doing trial one. Now next, I wanna add water to that cup without zeroing it until the total mass is about 50 grams. Okay, 50.46 is perfectly acceptable. Anywhere from 49 to 51 would be okay. So I'm gonna record that in my data table also. That's the total mass of the solution for this trial. Okay. We're gonna repeat that procedure using different masses of sucrose for each of the trials to generate 10 different solutions in labeled Dixie cups. Each one of those masses is going to be used in the following data table in order to calculate the percentage of sucrose by mass. So it's these two numbers here that are going to calculate this percentage and I'll take out my calculator and calculate what that works out to be. We were aiming for around 1% and sure enough, we have about 1.05%. So you repeat this preparation and this calculation for all of those solutions. The solutions percentages should vary between about 1% for the first one and about 10% for the last one if you follow the procedure and calculate correctly. So next we're turning our attention back to the dialysis tubing that's been incubating. And you take these out one at a time and uh, run your fingers over the end like you were trying to separate money. There was dollar bills that were stuck together. And when you do that, you'll see it is a tube. You can see the opening there. Okay, so we want to get these, each of these tubes open up all the way across the length of it. So do that from one end to the other. Okay, until they're separated. Okay, 
And then on one end, once you have the whole thing feeling like you can, you can feel the tubing running between your fingers, on one end, tie a knot as close to the end as you can tie it. See if you can pull the knot as close to the end so you don't waste any tubing and pull it very tight. Now also tubing is very strong. You can probably pull it as hard as you can to make it tight. There we go. Now, each one of these dialysis tubings, we're gonna do the same procedure to. Each one of them, we're gonna take about 10 milliliters of Gatorade. And we're gonna pour it into the tubing. If you have the small funnel in your kit around, that might help you pour it in. Um, I wasn't able to find mine, so I'm just gonna be careful and try to pour it in very neatly. Okay. All right, that works okay with or without the funnel, I guess. Okay. Now next we wanna take this dialysis tubing and we'd like to try to tie a knot that uh, catches just the Gatorade and doesn't really have the air bubbles. A little bit of air bubbles it wouldn't be a big problem. We'd like to if we can get the air bubbles out of there. So I'll take it and I'll first twist it like that. And now I'm just gonna tie a knot. Okay, okay. and make sure that knot is, knot is fairly firm. Okay, you don't wanna tear the dialysis tubing, pretty hard to tear it, but you wanna make sure it's very firm. And next you wanna take the Gatorade balloon and do your very best to, uh, oh, well, first we wanna cut it short actually. Let me get my scissor. So actually before we dry them off, we wanna, we wanna trim the tubing down close to the knot. Okay, we wanna be able to dry these tubes off and be, be sure there's very little water caught in the cracks and crevices. So we wanna cut these off nice and close to the knot. And then you wanna very gently give the tubing a rubbing over with your microfiber rag in order to get it dried off as best as you can. Okay. Okay. Turn on your scale. Place it on the scale, 9.25 grams. And you need to record that mass in the data table. 9.2 grams would be the mass of the Gatorade balloon number one. That's the one that I'm doing. And right now it's before it has been incubated. So once you have your 10 standard solutions prepared and you have 10 Gatorade baggies, you're gonna put each one into a different percent sucrose. And you can push it to make sure it goes underneath the surface. Set up 10 of those and start your timer for one hour. Now after one hour is passed, all of those Gatorade balloons will have incubated. You'll take them out one by one, and each one you wanna take and carefully dry off with your microfiber rag. All right, you wanna get into all the cracks and crevices if you can. You certainly don't wanna squeeze it and break it, They're not that delicate, but you don't wanna squeeze it too hard. And you wanna rub it thoroughly over with your microfiber rag. Then turn on your scale tear it if it doesn't read zero, and put your balloon on there. Okay. Whatever value you read off the scale there, you're going to record in the data table right here as the mass after incubation. The next step is to calculate the change in mass for each one of the balloons. So for my sample data here, the change in mass is a difference. This is 9.25 minus the 8. Point 7.5. After you have all this data filled in, you're going to make a graph with the percentage of sucrose as the x-axis and the change in the mass of the Gatorade balloons as the y-axis. The changes in mass for the Gatorade balloons may be either positive or negative. You may see some of them 
gain mass, you may see some of them lose mass. It's most likely that what you'll see is the solutions at low, somewhere in the lower percentages will have tended to gain mass. So you might see some dots on the page that might look something like that. And somewhere towards the higher end, you certainly will see ones that will have lost mass. Maybe a little bit of random error in there. And somewhere in between, we want to determine what is the percentage at which this graph looks like it crosses 0%, the, the zero, 0 grams lost. 0 grams lost, whatever percentage that is, is the percentage that corresponds to an isotonic solution that is isotonic with the gate rate. In the post lab, after you determine that percentage, you're going to be asked to convert that percentage description of concentration into a molarity and then use the equation that's normally used to calculate osmotic pressure to calculate the osmotic pressure of the solution from the uh, molarity that corresponds to that percentage. One little addendum or correction I'd like to add to this. When I was tying off the Gatorade balloon, um, I'd like to suggest that when you tie it off, that you tie it off a little bit up towards, um, the, a little bit further to the top than I did so that your balloon is looser and more slack and has room to expand if it wants to expand. So after you flatten it out and get all of the air or most of the air out, I'm just saying instead of tying the knot close here to the liquid level to try to tie it a little bit further up. This would be for all of your balloons. Okay, so you have all this empty space here now. Okay, so now this balloon will be a little bit floppier and if it has to absorb water, if it wants to absorb water, it'll be able to do it without uh, stretching the walls or breaking the dialysis tubing. Okay. 